Extreme weather conditions are wreaking havoc in the Eastern Cape. Parts of the province have been left underwater with the heavy floods triggering and let slide in some areas. ENC reporter Ronald Masinda following those developments on the ground. Let's go live now to him this afternoon here on Today. Good afternoon, Ronald. Whereabouts are you now? What have you seen? I mean, we've seen scenes of water everywhere. Yes, yeah, so we're just outside Port St. John's, Bradan, close to an area that was also heavily affected by uh, these uh, rains. Uh, we understand that it rained for about five hours. And just to paint a picture to the viewers as to what people in these uh, areas saw, uh, one man that we spoke to uh, earlier in the day, he says that he saw a part of the R61 road caving in. Now, this road is leading into Port St. John's, and of course, it is a popular holiday destination, and one wonders how this road will now be fixed in time, especially as we head to the Easter weekend. But uh, there are many concerns, not only from residents, but also uh, from the local municipality. We spoke to uh, the mayor of Port St. John's, and she told us earlier, Pradhan, that uh, one of the concerns is that this is becoming the norm where many of these floods are leaving a lot of uh, uh, destruction to property as well as road infrastructure. There are several roads, especially uh, near the beachfront as well, that are badly affected uh, by these floods. We understand that uh, in July last year, they actually did a handover where a contractor handed over the, the, the refurbishment of some of the roads. And now a part of these roads are now actually damaged. And according to the municipality, they can only, uh, you know, afford around 36 a million rand in, during the financial year on service delivery. And these uh, problems uh, that are caused now by the floods will only exacerbate the issues that are, they are faced with. During this hour, I can also confirm that uh, the Deputy Minister for Human Settlements, Pam Trete, is also expected here in Port, in Port St. John's to examine some of the damage. We understand that several uh, households have been uh, left uh, uh, without homes after their homes were badly damaged, some swept away uh, by the floods. But we understand that here in Port St. John's, uh, around five people were also struck by lightning, uh, but there was no loss of life. There is concern, however, in Lusikisiki, uh, where around three people are still missing following the floods. Yeah. So, Ronald, the people there, are they getting any emergency relief? I mean, I reported earlier that uh, some uh, organizations like the Gift of the Givers are coming into the area. Yes, yeah, so the gift of the givers is definitely going to be here, but we also understand that disaster management, they've also been working around the clock trying to uh, assist affected households. But some households were telling us earlier that they took matters into their own hands. Uh, they decided themselves that they were going to relocate and move to a nearby clinic in Port St. John's. Uh, some are complaining that, you know, uh, these floods have been exacerbated by issues of uh, service delivery or the lack thereof. Uh, where some of the homes have been uh, flooded due to poor drainage systems uh, in areas uh, where we went to earlier in the day. We also understand that Port St. John's itself has had its fair share of issues of uh, service delivery, uh, so much so that uh, some of the protesters uh, even uh, torched uh, the home of the mayor in Port St. John's. Uh, but uh, the mayor uh, says that, you know, they are trying their utmost best uh, to get as much help uh, from outside as possible. They've also reached out to the Premier of the province, Oscar Mabuyane, uh, saying that uh, this matter needs urgent attention. Okay. We understand that these floods are one of the worst, uh, the, possibly the worst floods in Port St. John's uh, took place in 2019. But cause for concern definitely for the Eastern Cape government uh, okay. as it grapples with uh, issues okay. such as climate change. We understand that even in areas like uh, Coffee Bay, for example, where we were reporting uh, not so long ago where six uh, lives were lost, uh, even there as a tourism destination, they are also affected by such okay. floods. Thank you very much, Ronald Masinda, for that update. It's outside Port St. John's.